Hello, and welcome back to the Wii U 5. With the amazing growth of indie titles and support on the Wii U, the fact that I've only reviewed one indie game before is a little embarrassing. As an ambassador of the first party plus indie game machine that the Wii U is becoming, I haven't talked nearly enough about indie games, so let's get right into one of many indie game reviews to come. Shovel Knight is what is a clear effort at a modern retro game. Brought to us by Yacht Club Games, Shovel Knight is an 8-bit love letter to the games of old and is all about the nostalgia. So how well does it hold up in the modern era? It's a 2D side-scroller. It has a jump button and an attack button. That's basically it right there in terms of controls, and that's all you need. The rest is up to you. Like games of the good old days, Shovel Knight is primarily a game based on your skill, something a little too scarce in today's games. Trust me, you'll die. It's normal. The good news is that the game does take a hint from modern games that ease the skill requirement. Not only does it not have lives, but you also have a second chance to recoup any cost you lost from dying. In this manner, you can try and try and try again until you get it right, barring the repeated loss of gold. To further its own modernization, you can custom map the buttons and also use a third button just for the use of relics. I personally had to modify the buttons, as the defaults were a bit of an odd choice as any longtime Wii U owner can attest to. Other than that, if you are or were an 8-bit gamer, so much about this game will feel familiar. In fact, if the map doesn't immediately give you a nostalgia trip, you missed out on one of the most amazing gems of the early days in gaming. I wholeheartedly expect indie games to not last me very long. Shovel Knight wasn't much different. An initial playthrough in which I didn't go for 100% took me 5 hours and 2 minutes. For $15, that's a tough sell on content. What you get is a love letter with nods to the greatest games of the 8-bit era, and it's a bit of a premium. Sure, a completionist always gets more game for their money, but most people are going to take that one trip through Shovel Knight and then bury it in their minds to play again maybe once or twice a year just for the nostalgia trip. And that's really what Shovel Knight is, a nostalgia trip. The good news is that if you are a completionist, the game has its own set of achievements, known as feats, for you to break a sweat on. It also has a New Game Plus mode, letting you keep your equipment but upping the ante for those of you willing to cry tears of blood. If you're in it for getting bang for your buck, Shovel Knight is hard to recommend at $15. If you're in it for a nostalgia trip with its own flavor of humor and story that draws on the best gems of 8-bit gaming, then by all means make this purchase. On the Wii U, of course. Who could have possibly expected to see an 8-bit widescreen game when we made the transition to 3D polygon graphics? No matter, Shovel Knight is what I'm going to call HD 8-bit. I mean, to be humorous, it's 1080p 8-bit, and it's surprisingly crisp. In addition to the move into the HD era, the audio takes its cue from the 8-bit era as well. However, just like the widescreen 8-bit, the audio is of a higher bitrate and quality than its old cousins, and thus rings through with all the memories of old while not grating on the ears in the least. Feel free to blare your new old tunes through your home theater system and feel like you're a kid again. In the end, Shovel Knight does, in fact, rely on the work of early 8-bit games to create a foundation. This framework is then modified and improved upon in many ways to create a modernized classic. Unfortunately, it can be faulted for this use of nostalgia, as the primary beauty of being an indie developer is just that, independence. With the freedom to create whatever they wish and do it however they wish, the fact that this game chose to ride along on the use of nostalgia is both its best and worst feature. It's familiar, it's fun, it requires skill, but it is, indeed, only an extension of the old games we used to play, rather than an entirely new creation from something old. It's a good game, and it's just the game that fans of the NES days are looking for. But outside of that, it's a one-time romp to show today's kids how we used to game. I give Shovel Knight an 8.5 out of 10. That's it for today. I'll have another indie game review coming along soon, so keep an eye out. You can like my Facebook page if you want to know what the next week's episode is going to be every Monday. You can follow me on Twitter for totally random retweets. And naturally, subscribe for more. See you next week on the Wii U 5.